player 2 has joined the game. Back to another episode of the Two Player Co-op Podcast. As always, I'm one of your hosts here, Kevin, along with my remote brother from my mother, Show One. How we doing? Fantastic. If this is the first time, and by the way, I love that I say fantastic. I hope other people do too. If this is the first time you're seeing, hearing, or listening to us, this is the Two Player Co-op Podcast. We're just about every week. Two brothers get together to tell you everything you need to know about in the world of video games. If you like that, make sure you like the video, subscribe, share it with your friends, family, and everyone in betwixt. If you only listen to us on audio services around the multiverse, that's cool as well. Just make sure you drop us a like, five-star review, or anything that your service offers. If you really like us, you can go to patreon.com slash two player co-op. Just like our producers, Steve Appleton, Aunt Sue, Vernon Slayton, and Dustin Downstead. By the way, should I be saying Trey or Vernon? Let me know, man. Because I, I don't know now. Because like you're Vernon Slayton on, on Patreon, but then you're Trey, but then you're Sir Vern. So just let me know, dude. I want to I want to say it how you want me to say it. As well as our affiliates, James Solar, Sarah Solar, and John Tingley. Thank you all so much from the bottom of our hearts. I hope I say it enough, but I don't think I do. Thank you so much. Uh, unfortunately, our affiliate tier cannot be with us in the chat because we are recording this remotely because Sean is home alone this weekend, so we had to do this remotely. So it is what it is. We'll be back to normal next week. If you like cool t-shirts and stuff and merch, you can go to teespring.com slash stores slash two player co-op. Sean. Yeesh. Before we get into everything here, uh, just one thing I want to mention here was that earlier this week, there was a record set for the, uh, I, I think it was a collectible record. I don't know if it was just video games or what, but a sealed copy of the original Legend of Zelda sold for $870,000 at an auction, which set a new record. And that seems crazy, right? Imagine... Imagine okay. Kept ours. I mean, we would have never, we would have never not opened it because no. But imagine it, if we but... went to to Sears or Toys R Us or something and just bought up like five. You know, then we'd be very, very rich right now. Also, we'd be even. We would richer. have a pool, a true pool house <laughs> studio. We'd be even richer if we had a sealed copy of Mario sixty four, which today broke that record by almost doubling it by going for some reason for one point five six million dollars mario mario 64 sealed copy mario 64 i don't know if it's more rare because it was just i mean you just got an n64 you got mario 64 i don't know but it went for 1.56 million as of today so now we had one record set this week and then we had another record set and before that it was mario one for like seven hundred thousand. i want to say um but yeah we had two records set this week one of them almost double and I don't even like Mario 64. I don't know why anybody would pay. It's not even a good game. I wouldn't pay $15.60 for it, much less $1.56 million. Yeah, that's a little much. It is. So another thing before we get into everything else, um, I had kind of forgot this was coming out, but this week, Resident Evil Infinite Darkness released. I watched it. Sean watched it. Um, just as a side note, before we get into that, it was also announced that Resident Evil Village, God bless them. I'm so happy. They've now sold already over 4.5 million copies. This is going to end up being the, the best-selling Resident Evil game. I'm almost 100% sure at this point. But what is number one right now? I think it's six, unfortunately. With how much? Six or seven million. Really? Yeah, it's either five or six with around six or seven million. I, I think it is six, unfortunately. Yeah, but I mean, this game's been out for two months, right? And it's already sold four point five million. So this is easily going to break the record, and it is ten times better than either of those games. Yes. So, Sean, Resident Evil Infinite Darkness. I liked it overall. The issues I had were, I think it kind of needed more than four episodes. I think one more episode could have fleshed out some of the stuff because 
there was some weird traveling from China back to the U.S. in about 10 minutes stuff that happened near the end. I lost track of where people were. And why some people were alive after just getting blasted in the chest with a bullet. Well, but I mean, maybe he's got some, you know. Oh, he superhuman. You know, he, he, I, mean, I mean, he definitely did. I mean, but like they kind of. Yeah. So maybe let, let's just say maybe light spoilers here. But I mean, it literally it's like 80 minutes long. Go watch it on Netflix. If you care about spoilers, we may get into some minor spoiler stuff here. Um, but overall, I thought Resident Evil Infinite Darkness was pretty good. It's like a 57 on Rotten Tomatoes, which I think is a little low. Um, but. I mean, I liked it. I think it could be a cool video game. Um, I liked that it was in between four and five. So is is the idea that this is a like season one or is that TBD? Like, I mean, it's TBD. They have not said if season two is going to happen. However, when you watch it, it does say season one, episode one, episode two, episode three, episode four. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, the way it ends, clearly it's set up. And I did not know. uh, Again, I haven't played five, but there's a company mentioned at the end of this, not even mentioned, but you see it on a briefcase that apparently is the bad guy in five. I did not know that. I thought five was just, I I thought everything was just umbrella. I didn't know there was another company out there. As soon as I saw it, I'm like, that sounds familiar. And I kind of thought it was five, but I couldn't remember and then confirm that it was. I don't remember what the whole story is, um, but I think they're. You find out about them in five, and I think uh, it's just kind of assumed that they were also behind four. Like they kind of created, I guess, the Las Plagas or whatever. Right. So I don't know. It's they're definitely. It sure seems like they have plans for a season two. So I, I, I hope we get one. I thought it was, I'm kind of with you. I think it was good. It's no Castlevania, but at the same time, it was probably about as good as the first season of Castlevania. Like to me, the mm. first three episodes was, I was just kind of like, why are we showing this other country? And who's the good guys and who's the bad guys? And like, I just, I felt lost and i don't know if that was me or if that was kind of the point episode four was awesome episode four felt like a resident evil game it felt like the end of a resident evil game you had kind of the again slight spoilers who remake kind three of a make, little bit of yeah you know, tyrant action going on like, oh that dude that that was definitely a tyrant that, exactly yeah yeah and that whole facility they were i mean it yep. just looked like it was out of a video game so I really liked four. Four was the first time I feel like it felt like Resident Evil. The like zombie rats and stuff. I'm like, okay, I don't know. Are they just running out of animals at this point? You're like, well, let's let's throw some rats in there. I don't know, whatever. Um, but like all of the zombies were just like ah, pow, dead. Like there was no. It just felt like there was never any threat of the zombies. Like you barely ever saw them. Like they'd be like, ah, pow, dead. Okay, well, well, just, or they'd be felt, like, and like you said, maybe it just kind of felt rushed. I don't know. Like, it seemed like a lot happened, and they only did it in four episodes, and not even four like 30, 40 minute episodes, right. four like 22 minute episodes. Um, overall, I liked it. I thought episode four was really good. It definitely ended on a high note. Um, I'm not sure how I feel. There was definitely some, like, I don't know, Uncanny Valley stuff going on. Like, I thought it looked good to really good. Like, there were times when the characters were relatively still. I'm like, man, this looks almost too lifelike. But then when they would walk, it was like... Well, yeah. Like, the walking and the talking just always seemed a little bit off. But when they were relatively, you know still it, it looked really good and i don't know it was good i liked it so let, I'm, I'm just going to call it here i'm going to call this in the timestamps. we're going into full spoilers because i just feel like we have to so spoiler alert if you've been this far we're going to get full into spoilers now um first off yes the it's weird that i i thought it looked good 
but I also thought like Leon and Claire looked better in RE2 remake in a video nope. game. I don't really like the model. Leon didn't really look like Leon. To His me. hair is know. so dark. Like, I know in the original RE2, he was like a redhead and it's just kind of gotten darker and darker since then. Yeah. And now it's just like dark, dark. I don't know. I didn't really like Claire looked more or less like she did in RE2 for the most part. Also, Leon, I love that I she know. never like he looked. <laughs> she never changes her clothes, which is hilarious. Over like a week right, or whatever yeah. this takes place, she's wearing the same red jacket and stuff. But I'm like, it's Claire, whatever. Um, I was confused in yeah. the boat. What what I thought was going to happen, and I was kind of right when when you when Leon walks by Jason and he's like panting and stuff, and he sees him inject something. I was like, oh, this is the this is the big bad. And then I doubted myself after he got shot and I thought killed. But I was like, no, he actually is the big bad. The, the the thing that I thought looked the best in the entire four episodes was actually him as the tyrant. Because for some reason that I was like, this yeah. is the best CG in this entire thing. Maybe because it's not a human anymore. It's a zombie mutant like God thing. Um, I thought yeah. him as the tyrant was the best the CG was. I also don't understand how, again, I don't know how they got from China back to the U.S., in time to be there when this speech is happening. And then of course, Leon and Claire get there at St. And Claire's, you know, she's, she's trapped and everything. Obviously they're going to get together. I, I, I kind of wish Claire would have gone with him, but now when you know the whole story, I get it. I get why they were there. Also, I thought uh, Shen May, I thought that was Ada, Ada Wong at first. And I was like, please be Ada. Please be Ada. Please I was thinking, Ada. I'm like, okay, it's resident evil. It's Leon. It's around the timeline of, four yep they keep mentioning china 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 okay well clearly we're gonna see ada and then it never happened so clearly if there's a season two we're going to have ada she'll probably factor in pretty highly um also yeah. it would be funny some people are speculating that for season two what they might do is actually go jill and chris and then try to fill up in, fill in the gap between five and six or something I mean, that could be cool. Also, so what What the hell? Because they were like, Jason. And I'm like, what? When, when the mansion blew up in Shanghai, was that Jason? And also, if it was, how? And I feel like there must have been a lot. Of, I feel there's like there's a lot of. Yeah, there's a lot of questions that they don't really answer. It's a lot of I mean, I get it's. It's, it's Resident Evil. It's <laughs> Resident Evil. Yeah, you already kind of have to, you know, suspend, you know, but just there's just some. Th there was another thing. Oh, like Jason at the end when uh, he had the dude and he's like, oh, you need this uh, inhibitor or whatever. He's like, no, I don't care. I'm already dead. Blah, blah, blah. And then, oh, wow. It ran out at the perfect time for him to turn into, you know, the tyrant, the tyrant as yeah. he's I mean. Or is he just like Avengers He's Hulk. Endgame like yeah. Hulk where now he can control it? He's like, no, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn into him now. Like, I don't know. There's there's a lot of things like that. I'm just like, I don't know. I get it. It's it's zombies, it's based off a of video game. It's not meant to be taken that seriously, but yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff like that that they're just like, just take our word for it. This is just it's what happened. The other thing I thought when it was Jason at the end before he turned into the tyrant, I was like wait a minute, is every, is everything in this facility a Jason? And Jason actually did get killed by Leon, like actual, the actual Jason. But now this is a new Jason. Right. And maybe they're hooked up to the mega my seat, whatever thing. So they all share a consciousness or something. So they know what Jason's plan was. That's what happened in my mind. Also, the acid is everywhere. And then they drop Jason into it and he dies. Yeah. And he lands on a platform. But then Leon goes down there and I thought, okay, maybe they drained the acid, but the acid's still there. It's just down here. And of course his heart's still beating. But now whole... he's like impaled up on the thing. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, no, I saw you go into the acid. But also I'm just like, take a shotgun and shoot him in the heart that is exposed. Because it, it kept like, I watch it with, with captions yeah. on, everything was like heart beating, heart beating. I'm like, shoot this dude in the freaking heart and kill him for crying out loud. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But again, I liked it. I think it's better. I'm guessing it's better than any actual Resident Evil movie we've gotten so far. 
I haven't watched any of them. I'm, I'm glad they were very. Yeah, I'm. I'm glad they were very. I mean, it's it's its own story, but they're at least trying to make it seem as if it's canon, right? Like it it is canon. I did read you that. see the it's, you see the yeah. picture of Ashley Graham, and yep. she looks more or less like she did in yep. RE4. I'm like, okay, this is cool. This feels right. So I don't know how I feel about the title. It's just like like Resident Evil infinite uh, dark darkness i don't know like just what, call it like why? under siege what, I mean, or okay, something whatever but yeah yeah overall i liked it um that they, they i did read somewhere that this is actually considered canon now so i think this is kind of like how anything that comes out now that star wars related video game book comic whatever is canon that's how they're treating this so this is actually what happened between four and five um okay the other thing, just before we wrap this up, at the beginning, when they're rescuing everybody, Black Hawk Down style, Jason actually did get strung up by them, right? And then he somehow escaped and didn't turn. That's what I'm saying. I was so confused. Like they're hiding behind like the helicopter or whatever. The dude pulls up with like an RPG and like, is that one of them? Is this a good guy? Is this a bad guy? He shoots it. And then all of a sudden, cut to like, rowdy mob with people strung up one dude's cut in half yeah I'm like well who's are those the same guys we were just looking at who are these people that are strung up and i'm just i was so lost there were so many flashbacks yeah it was it was it was hard to keep track of but i mean overall i liked it i mean i hope we get a season two i do think like i said i think this could use one or two more episodes to actually flush out what's going on how do you get from china back to the u.s in 15 minutes um yeah wh- why was jason who bombed the house in shanghai like and also jason looked like he was dead as hell when when leon shot him so i mean i don't know and, and it's not like he's a mold boy like resident evil 7 and 8 it's not that he's just got the super right. serum thing whatever and then i don't know i feel like i'm nitpicking here but i really yeah. did like it uh if you've listened this far just go watch it, it was, obviously I mean, we spoiled it but it was good I think yeah. the 50, whatever you said it is on Rotten Tomatoes is a little low. I would give it like a seven. Yeah. Yep. That's what I would say. You know, like it was fine. It was good. So, yeah, I agree. All right, Sean, moving on. Uh, let's talk Returnal. You beat it. But, bef- but before we get to that. So. Last week, I was like, you know, this, this, this. I don't know how much more of this I can take. And then I did a run, and I beat Freaky or Frikey or Frike, whatever his name is. And then I get to World 2, and it's tough. And I finally make it to the boss with not a good loadout, and I don't even care because I got there. And then I find out after that that there's a portal that takes you from the base all the way up to him. I'm like, cool. I got this. And then... I can't beat this guy and everything I'm reading from you, James, Colin, every, anybody who writes about this is like, this guy's not that bad. I'm like, okay, cool. I got to him after I said I was done with this game. I made another run last night. I got to him with about 150% integrity, a large vial and a level five carbine, the good carbine, not the slow carbine. But the problem was I had the void beam is my alt fire. And I hate that thing because I don't know how long it lasts. And also it's useless in this game because you have to shoot while moving. So and you I, have to, yeah, yeah. And again, I get to the third, I get through phase one and two fine. And I get to phase three. And when I get him down to about half health, when this dude just goes nuts and is jumping everywhere and swiping at you and throwing all the red balls, and blue balls and this and jump here. And then there's rings on the ground and all this. I don't know what to do. I've watched videos. I've read about it. But when I'm actually there fighting him, I'm like, there's nothing. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I can do. And I can't, I, I don't know that I can beat this guy. And I'm so frustrated. I think you I, can't. So I'm finally, you know, I said in the beginning, I'm like, it doesn't seem like enough really happens in this game for you to ever really get better. Like not much that you get is permanent yeah the sword is nice the hook shot is nice whatever but 
a that's not entirely true and i'm noticing not the alt fire but the secondary like perks whatever you want to call it effects on your weapons now they don't really get you can get up to i think four of them late game and i think that's where a lot of the better ones come into play but those are huge and you unlock them and once you unlock them like you'll pick a weapon up like the uh the the the, the hollow seeker it's got two things one's called the portal gun and one's called a portal turret i think and you'll find one and it'll say it but it'll say like locked or zero percent or something mm -hmm. and you just have to use it enough and you'll see the bar fill up and once it's full it's unlocked now it doesn't mean you'll always get it but that thing is how i've gotten through biomes five and six pretty much because it's just you just unload a clip and then occasionally this purple ball will show up and it'll just be like and it just like targets all the enemies around and then the portal turret especially if you get a gun that has both of those on it the portal turret is a similar thing, except it's like rapid fire, like hmm. whatever makes everything so much easier. And obviously that doesn't help you, but I say all this because a huge part of this is just you, the player getting better and you just have to play and play. And yeah, you don't start off any stronger or anything like that, but you just, you just get better every time you play. And I mean, it's not to say this game's not hard. I still die a lot, but you can beat that guy. You can definitely beat him. Um, I just don't know. You may have, well, I don't know. I'm wondering I, if it's worth it to not take the shortcut in biome two and there's just no make way. Your way up. Cause biome severed, two isn't that hard except severed, for the severed guys, yeah. but you shouldn't. Yeah. But my thing is, this. it's one of those things you just need to keep your distance and dash. And I don't know. I mean, yeah, but he does like three. He swipes at you and then there's a red ring and then another red ring and another red ring while he's shooting at you and everything. I think the only way I'm going to beat this there. guy, I figured it out after I was so pissed off last night was I think if I didn't have the void beam, if I would have had either the, the tracking swarm or the homing missiles as my alt fire to where I can just go boom, boom. And not have to just do this this little tiny laser that's just zzz, and I have to hold it right on him. I don't know how long it's going to last and everything. You you can't you can't have a special like that against these bosses. You have to be moving the entire time. And yes. I'm at the point now where I need to have a hollow. I need to have about 150 percent integrity. A hollow seeker that has a tracking uh, tracking swarm or a homing missile, and I need to have. <clears throat> a large vial and I need to have a moon man. And that's the only way I'm going to beat this boss or any boss in the rest of this game. I don't know that I, I, so I, I, what I, what I think will happen that may be true, but what I wouldn't be surprised is you may get that loadout and get to the boss and beat him without even using your moon man, maybe without even using your vibe. Like, I think it's so much of this game is mental. It's all, well, and, and it's RNG you'll probably too. play a little bit more loose and free and whatever, because you're like, all right, I don't need to, if I get hit, I get hit. That's fine. I've got my fairy. I've got health to use if I need it. And you'll probably play a lot better that way. There are times where I try to take my time and I'm like, I'm not going to get hit once and I die. Yeah. And then there's times like now where I'm just trying to get the platinum. And so I'm just rushing through. I'm like, I don't even care about anything in this biome now. I'm just trying to get to biome five or get to biome two or whatever. And I just run through it and I'm just like, oh yeah, melee, melee, pew, 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 you know, whatever. I don't care. I'm really just trying to get through it. And I get through the whole biome without taking a single hit. Like, it's just weird. Like a lot of it is just, it's practice, 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 practice. But it's also just this weird mental thing where it's like, you sometimes just play better when you're not when you're not trying, but I don't know. It sucks. It's tough. And you, but you can definitely beat him. The, the fact that James says that Cyber Shadow and Cupcake, Cupcake, Cuphead are harder than this, I don't, I don't believe that. Like, and maybe it's just because we grew up on 2D games. Maybe that's the difference because he's a young buck and they're just men. so different. Yeah. I don't think I don't think Cuphead is harder than this. Cyber Shadow may maybe, but no, this game is not 
easy. Like I was telling you, I'll tell the people now, you know, so yeah, I beat it. Yeah. So and then once ahead. I beat it, I went back. I'm like, well, let's go back to, let's go back to biome one. I'm going to start working for the platinum, which basically means among other things, the main thing is go back through all the biomes, find all of the scout logs, some of which I don't even think appear until the post game content. So you can't get them all before then anyway. Find all the scout logs, find all the glyphs, the red things on the wall. And I think also the the other Xeno, what are they called? The archives or whatever, yeah. where like there's like the little blue balls and they make like a character or whatever. Basically find all of those three things. So I beat it. I went back to biome one, <clears throat> expecting to just run through it. And no, it's still not easy. It's not like all of a sudden it's new game plus and I'm super OP. Like now I needed to like calm down because I was getting overconfident and I kept getting hit by stupid things and whatever. And I got to the end. I'm like, all right, let's go on to biome two. But I found one of those. And I don't know if you've gotten any of these, those like cubes you can find mm -mm. Uh, data cubes. I think they're called. Mm -mm. Every so often, you probably saw one of the things after you beat Frike, maybe. there's. I think there's probably one in every biome. Uh, there's like a little machine thing that you can put it into if you have one, and it gives you either an like a consumable or an artifact, and you A, a get it, and then B, unlock it for future right. playthroughs. It's not permanent, but it's unlocked. And so I had found one in that biome, and I knew if you beat Frike, there's one of those things where you can put it in to claim it. So I'm like, I'm going to go destroy Frank. I've beaten boss two and three and four and six, whatever. I'm going to kill Frank. And I died. He beat me. Like, and it wasn't even close. Like, I think I got him to the third health bar, but like, I wouldn't even say he was almost dead. He had at least half his last health bar left. Like the game's not easy and it, uh, it gets harder, but it doesn't get that much harder. I think biome five is by far the worst, but like, there's not a whole lot of difference to me between one, two, three, four, and six. They're all kind of difficult, but if you can get the right loadout, you'll usually be fine. Um, but yeah, so I'm working on the platinum. Uh, basically, I got all, so I got the trophy for like getting everything, completing the survey, they call it, for biome one and four because you always start in one and four. So by okay. just playing those so many times, just naturally as part of the process, I had already found most of the stuff. I found the last couple of things and whatever. So those were done. Um, I ended up completing it for three. So I had two, five, and six left. Um, so I kept running through four, trying to get to five. I think I had two scout logs and one uh, uh, cipher thing, whatever, the red thing to find. And I'm just like, I don't, I can't keep, if I try to play through four normally to get powerful, to be able to play through five and survive it. And I end up with, you know, a RNG that doesn't spawn the things I need. I've just wasted so much time. So I just got into the habit of, I'm just, just going to run there. through four, yeah. get to five and just do what I can try to survive long enough to find one of the things you need. And luckily everything you need is on the map. Like yeah. you don't always know what it is, but like the glyph things are always a little blue triangle, which could be a key, the glyph thing, or uh, the, the, the things that improve your proficiency. But like, if you see one of those in the room you're in, go, go. that way and see, yeah. maybe it'll be the thing you need. Um, same thing with the scout logs. It's the little radar looking things. And sometimes it's the suit that you can, you know, bring to life and have to kill it. Or sometimes it's just a scout log, but like they show up on the map. So you know where to go and whatever. So I was playing and playing, playing while Kira was down for a nap today. And I kept, and I hate biome five. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. And I don't particularly like biome four either, especially when I'm trying to just run through it and be reckless just to try to save time. But I just kept, I swear there are times the, the, the turret things in biome four, they shoot lasers. So it's like a red beam that's like tracking you and you hear it go. And then it's, <clears throat> and then it shoots a laser at you and it tracks you. <clears throat> One hit kill. Usually no, but it sucks. It, okay. it hurts you pretty good. Um, usually you'll see the laser and it's like a laser, you know, it's just, 
tracking you. Mm -hmm. And then when it actually fires, you see it come at you and then you just dodge. But I swear there were times today where I would just be, I'm like, okay, the thing's targeting me. That's fine. I'm ready to dodge. And then all of a sudden it just turns into like the actual laser yeah. with no, like it wasn't coming at me so I could dodge. It was just all of a sudden it went from this laser to that laser and I was getting hit and I was just, I was, I was getting tilted and I was just playing terribly. And I'm like, I don't know. I think I need to just stop. But every so often I would have a run where I'd be like, oh my God, I see it. I got to get over there and get that scout log or, oh, I wonder if that's the glip, whatever. And I got to where I only had one thing left and I was having a terrible run. I went in this room. I'm like, nope, I'm not going that way. Let's go this way. And I'm like, oh my God, this room looks different. There's some blue triangles on the map. I'm like, please, God, don't kill me and let one of these be the thing I need. Sure enough, it was. The trophy popped. So as far as I'm concerned, I never, ever have to go back to Biome 5 and I right. couldn't be happier about it. Now, there's an argument to be made. Should I play through five? So I'm a little bit stronger to be able to get through six, maybe. But I don't think I ever want to go back to five. The funny thing is the other thing you have to do for the platinum and to actually beat act three, as they call it. Once you beat the game, there's a new thing you have to find. There's one per biome. Once you find all of them, the house unlocks one more time. You get you have to get item. it in one run. No, 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 no. Oh, you God. can get them all. Okay individually um you go beat the game again there's something you see after you beat the last boss there's something you see and it's part of the story and so once you get these all these things you go back and do the house you get one more item then once you have that item you can do something with the thing you see after you beat the boss and that is like the true ending whatever that ends act three so I was playing through four, five, and six, just trying to A, find those, and B, find as many of the, all the things that I needed to get. And I found all of them. I mean, not all of them, but I found the thing in five, and I found the thing in six. So I got all six of them. And I'm like, I'm right near the end, but I can't do any. Like, I can go beat the boss again, but just because I have all six, I need to go back to the house to get the thing that I actually need. But I'm like, whatever. Let me see if I can just beat the final boss again. And I smoked it it didn't matter because i still couldn't get the thing because you know i had all the things but i didn't get the thing so i've beaten the game twice now and i didn't even really intend on beating it that other time but i'm just like i'm really powerful i'm right at the end let's go ahead and just you know practice and i smoked him so i've beaten the game twice now but now that i actually have the item i do need to go back and finally beat it a third time but so I got to find the last of the things in biome two, which isn't bad, but I'm missing like four or five things and who knows how many different loadout, you know, whatever yeah. they're all spread between like, I don't know, maybe I'll just get lucky yeah. and they're all in the same one. And I just got to have that one load and then I'll find them all. But it's one of those things where now I got to go back and go to one and just kind of run through one to get to two and try to find the things I'm missing. And then everything else I'm missing is in six, which isn't that difficult. It's just big and it's kind of hard to navigate, but, and I'm not worried about beating the game again. Like uh, biome six isn't that bad as long as for me, I need the hollow seeker with at least the portal gun or the portal turret, if not both, because there's one hit and like enemies that you die with one hit, even just from a stray, like uh homing thing from your gun. Yeah but they're all over and they're really fast. And some, in some rooms they spawn infinitely until you kill this enemy that's spawning them. I am. There's so no way in hell. Difficult. There, there is well, no, no way. In so hell. it's not all bad because if you get the portal gun, <clears throat> it keeps just kind of spawning every so often and it just takes out all of them yeah. and they're one hit kills. So, and especially when they're just endlessly spawning, it's an easy way to get your, uh, your adrenaline to full. Because they just keep spawning and they're easy to pick off as long as you're not like swarmed by them. So biome six really isn't that bad. So at this point, it's just playing it enough to get the right loads to be able to find the things that I need. And I'm going to get the platinum easily. I mean, I'm definitely now that I'm done with biome five, like I know I'll get the platinum hopefully by this time next week, but <clears throat> we'll see. I don't know that I'm going to go any further. I I'm glad Skyward Sword is out this week because as much as I've heard that that Zelda game sucks, I just need to play a regular game right I, now. You need, you need a palate cleanser. You yeah. need to step away. But see, the thing is, if, if I step away, I'm never going away, back. You're going to regress. So, well, 
I think some time away is not the worst thing in the world. I think you do need to just kind of take a two day long deep breath and then go back. But if you take a week or two off, you're going to come back and you're not going to remember how to play the game. And then yeah. you really will give up at that point. But, well, it's like yeah. me saying I want to. I don't, do the- I don't think you should give up. Uh, it's like me Especially saying. Especially because w- once you beat Biome 2, right. Biome 3 is not that bad. It's not much worse than 2. And once you get the hook shot thing, the game just, it just, everything feels a little bit more fluid. It's just, I think if you can beat Biome 2, you'll, you're, you're going to be right back into it. And you can definitely beat Biome 2. Well, so two things. It reminds me of how I want to go back and do the PS5 version of Doom Eternal, but I haven't played that game in a freaking over a year. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And it's a good thing I have to start from the beginning because yeah. I can't do a PS4 saves transfer. Thanks, Microsoft. Um, but also two things. I know I asked you last week, but now you've beaten it and you've done some post-game stuff. Do you like the story? Does it make sense? Does it matter? Or is this game just all about the gameplay? And then I got one other thing I want to say. There's some cool story. I kind of want to read up on it because I still yeah. don't know if it's one of those things where like, I don't know. I don't want to spoil anything, but I'm like, right. I still don't know. Am I really trapped on a planet or is this all some weird? That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. Manifestation of like, I I still don't really think I know, but a lot of it, if nothing else, all the little um, visions you have and stuff, when you die and come back to life, all these things that seem completely meaningless, like, it all makes sense. Like like a giant octopus in the sky or whatever. Yeah. Like it all comes together. They explain all, well, to some extent they explain all that. I'm sure once I actually get the true ending, it'll probably make even more sense, but um, yeah, there's, it's, it's a cool story. It's definitely more about the gameplay, I think, but at least it gives you, there was some attempt at a story. It's not just you're trapped on a planet and you can't die go right. kill a bunch of aliens like they try to have a story to it the other thing i was gonna say because i'm i'm so pissed off at this boss i'm gonna give it one or two more tries and if i get to him with one or two more good loadouts and i can't beat him i think i'm just done but then that makes me think of like demon souls and how i could not beat flame lurker i died five six seven eight times whatever it was and i was finally like sean what stone do I need to get you into my game to help me beat this jackass? I wish this had to me. That. Flame lurker is worse than any boss in Returnal. I think a lot of Demon Souls bosses, like the stupid uh, spider, flame lurker is harder than any boss in this game. the The armored spider is probably worse than any boss in this game. But you can cheese the him. Stupid, you can the hide two, behind the two things. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The two things that you fight up on the at the end of three, two, I think, whatever the man eater, I think they're called. Oh, that yeah. boss is yeah. harder than any boss in this game. Now that can also be cheesed, kind of if you get the right magic spell, right. whatever. But like Flame Lurker, there's not really any way to cheese him. You need to just gut it out. To me, he's harder than anything in this game. But but yeah, but in this game, you're on your own. There's no calling in help. So Yeah, and I don't want to be like, uh, Sean, can you come over and do a run with me and please <laughs> beat Ichthyon for me because I am bad at video games? I'm not going to do that. I would rather just say the hell with uh, it and just give up and watch cutscenes if I can't beat this guy. But I know like, if I can get to him with a vial and a moon man, and I just, I, I don't know if I just need to watch my, my YouTube tutorials over and over and over again until I finally like, okay, these I've watched like, Like if I say like, okay, I've watched five theories on how to deal with phase three. What do I think I can actually do with my horrible gaming expertise that I have or lack? The main thing I will say, and it's the hardest thing about the final boss in this game, because you can't do it. You almost need to just, just keep shooting, try to pay attention to your overload things and try to get the timing right. No, but what I'm saying is you almost just need to, Look, just you need to focus on not getting hit. Your attacks will hit him enough to drain yeah. his health over time. You basically just need to focus on not getting hit and just keep firing and they'll hit him when they hit him kind of thing. Don't focus on hitting him. Focus on not getting hit. Yeah, and just, that's true. You know, that's and that works on. I mean, that's kind of that goes for like this whole game. Really? Yeah. Now, the final boss, there's like these things you have to hit like 
certain spots. And once you hit that spot, then his weak points show up and you can only hit him there. You can't. <sighs> and again, if you have the portal gun, it shoots yeah. right where it needs to. But like you can't just arbitrarily shoot and keep dodging because you'll do like almost no damage. But for the most part, you just got to try to not get hit, especially with bosses. Just keep unloading and they'll they'll do their job. You just need to not get hit. Yeah. And that actually, I mean, that's how I get to phase three with almost full health because I'm like, I just take my time. But then it's and even in phase two, when it starts out and he's got the blue circle coming at you, I'm like, okay, just dodge forward back up keep shooting dodge the balls when the blue thing comes dash through it back up keep shooting just keep your just try to keep your cursor on him keep going and don't worry about it i know when he does the blue lightning thing i know go this way shoots it and then i go this way i know when he does the flying attack now how to dash through that like that's what i do like it takes me five minutes to get through the first two phases but i do it with one or two hits and then i get to three and i just go Whoa! <laughs> and i'm done like it's so frustrating <clears throat> yeah i know i can beat him i don't want to give up on it i, I want to see this game through i just don't know that i'm good enough but i'm gonna do i'm, I'm gonna give it the old college try yeah but yeah bring on skyward sword and all its stupid controls i want to play a zelda game and yeah and i did not do any runs today so i'm i'm at a, almost 24 hours now i'm at right actually right at about 24 hours without playing this game and that's probably good. And I'm not playing it tonight because as soon as we're done, I'm going to watch the end of the basketball game. Although it looks like it might end up being a blowout. So what's the score? Uh, Milwaukee's up 15 and a half. Oh, dang. Okay. Yeah. All right, Sean, you want to get the news of the week? Let's do it. So Sony finally this last week did a state of play and they set expectations in check ahead of time. They said, look, no PSVR 2, no Horizon Forbidden West, no God of War Ragnarok. It's like, well, okay. They said we're going to focus on third-party games, indies, and Deathloop. Okay. And I cannot wait to talk to you about Deathloop because after all this Returnal crap, you need to get this game. But I'll save it for then, even though I just said what I was going to say. <laughs> they let off with something purely for Sean and actually everybody else that has a PSVR. Moss Book 2 was announced for PSVR. It did not get a date, but if they're doing PSVR 2 holiday next year, you got to think this is like first half next year, unless they launch want this title. to be a launch title. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering if it'll be on. Well, I guess if they're saying it's on PSVR, they yeah. mean the current PSVR. So Correct. Now it might true. get a remaster for, for 2, for PSVR 2, whatever it ends up getting called. What did you think about Moss Book 2? Because you loved Moss, right? With little Quill, and she's so cute. I did. To me, it's it's just such a cool experience because there's like there's VR like Resident Evil, where like it's you and you're looking around, and then there's VR like Astrobot, where you're just kind of you're just the camera and you're just looking around, controlling your person. And Moss is kind of like that, but it's like it's like the game is unfolding in this world in front of you and you're, you're an observer, but you're also, you're not just a camera, you're a participant and it's just cool. It's like you're in this storybook and you're, it's just such a cool experience. The, the, I mean, not even the combat, the gameplay leaves a bit to be desired. It's more just, it's just a cool experience and yeah, cute little quill. Like it's a fun game. I'm looking forward to it for sure because I absolutely loved Moss and I got the Platinum. I may try to get the Platinum on 2-2. Two, two. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely looking forward two? to it. 2? Uh, yeah, I'll I'll play it when I get my PSVR 2. Uh, then next, they announced Arcade Ageddon, which is a multiplayer shooter that can be played solo or four-player co-op. I wrote down, it kind of looks like Fortnite, like it's a Fortnite clone, I guess. It is in early access now. Did this do anything for you? Mm, no yeah then we saw tribes of midgard again and they gave some post-launch details it is coming out july 27th it will be launched with the wolf saga season it's gonna have a new rune system saga quests and season exclusive items this is supposed to be like an indie game but it's launching with a season pass i'm like nah, i don't know now it, it looked okay the last time they did an event and i saw it and i was like this looks 
kind of cool. Oh, is it Summer Game Fest? I think they showed it. I was like, this looks kind of cool, but I'm like, you're already trying to monetize. I don't, I don't, it, it just didn't click for me this time. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I'm good. Fist, F.I.S.T. is out September 7th on PS4 and PS5, and I couldn't care less. Could you? No. Also, Hunters, Are- Hunters Arena Legends is out next month on PS4 and PS5. Uh, it will be free on PS Plus in August. I think this is already out on PS on PSC on PC. Uh, you can do PVE and PVP game modes. You can also do solo or team battle royale modes. I know Sony's trying to get in this whole multiplayer thing, but like, I don't give a crap about this at all. Obviously, no, this is not a game for me. Yeah, I'm just kind of sick of it all already. Then we got a new trailer for Sifu. And this is kind of sad. It has been delayed to early 2022, but that's fine. Th- this game, every time I see more of it, I'm like, I don't know that I've ever seen a game with hand-to-hand combat that just feels so impactful, I guess is the word. Like when you see this dude punch people, it's like, oh, oh. I don't know if it's the camera angle I mean, or the like sound effects or it. both. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's been delayed. Uh, so they gave more details about the game. So if you die... You can restart instantly after your death, but you will age. Um, however, you cannot age forever, as <laughs> that's how life works. Um, if yes. you get too old, it is kind of like, it seems like it's a permadeath, I guess, and you'll have to restart your whole path all over again. So it's kind of like, do you want to respawn right where you died and age, or do you want to just say, you know what? wait, let me start this level world run whatever over again and not age to preserve my age until I'm like, i am almost beat this last boss or whatever it is. You know what I mean? It kind of gives me like demon souls vibes almost where like the, the safe way to play the game is to basically play in soul form or whatever it is where you just, you have half health and you don't play in your actual body, even though you'll have full health and all that. But like, if you die, you know, it up, I don't remember the terminology. It's been so long. The this tendency. Point, but it ups the whatever, the tendency. Yeah. And everything just becomes that much harder. So it's definitely like a risk. And that's, I don't know. It's kind of the vibe I'm, I'm getting from this. It looks super cool. I think this is one of those games, especially if it's coming out early 22, whatever that means if there's nothing else coming out then like obviously re4 remakes not going to be coming out early next year who knows about horizon if this comes out like a week before horizon then sorry sifu you gotta wait but this is one of those that at first i was like oh that looks kind of cool but now the more and more i see that i'm like i think i want to play this game it it looks pretty sweet yeah uh then they show jet the far shore is coming out this year no date but it's out this year on ps4 and ps5 to me this looks like no man's sky but even more indie it looks awesome you you will switch between ship and foot travel uh, and it will have a heavy uh focus on exploration of these different planets and stuff anything about jet the far shore (laughs) Uh, i don't know i mean i'm kind of it's not something i'm just going to be like watching and keeping an eye on but i don't know i mean it's kind of intriguing i guess Oh, you know what I just realized is I just went into my head. Um, I was hoping, you know, they said no God of War, Horizon, PSVR 2, fine, whatever. But I was like, okay, cool. We're finally going to get a date on Axiom Verge. And we did not. I just realized that. Yeah, I forgot all about that. Demon Slayer is out October 15th. Okay. The only animes I've ever watched are Street Fighter 2, the animated movie, Street Fighter Alpha, the animated movie, and Castlevania. This ain't for me. Do not care. No. Yeah. Uh, We got a Lost Judgment trailer with English voice acting, so that's cool. But then, Sean, we get to Death Stranding's director's cut. 
coming to Xbox. I'm kidding. Uh, it's out September 24th. Uh, obviously, it will utilize haptic feedback and trigger resistance. I cannot wait to play this game with this dual sense. Like I said, like a month ago, whenever Summer Game Fest was, I was like, this game was made for the PS5 and for the dual sense. And I cannot wait for that. Obviously, it'll also have 3D audio, it will have near instantaneous loading. There will be performance and fidelity modes. Uh, Kojima also announced this wasn't in the stream, but there will be a very hard difficulty mode. I will not be playing that, but it's there if you want it. Um, Does there it will just make it harder to don't not fall over and stuff. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't. I'm sure there's, but I mean to be serious, I'm, I'm guessing there'll be more like enemy camps, like more mules was what the bad guys was called. Um, maybe right, more yeah. BTS. Maybe your 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 poop grenades don't do as much damage to the ghosts. I don't know. It'll be something like that. <laughs> and all that makes complete sense if you played the game but it sounds like i'm a crazy person <laughs> uh there will be new battles new melee attacks and new weapons i do like this now the game is not very focused on you know action at all but the action that's there it didn't feel like metal gear solid 5 it was not that refined at all i liked when i got the bolo gun and i could shoot guys and it would twist them up and shock them and everything but like most of it was like if the enemies see me I'm running because I don't want to throw my suitcase at them because I don't want to damage the salt that's in there. And then I don't get my XP for delivering it. You know what I mean? So the fact that they're right. adding more melee stuff, new guns and stuff, I think it's a good thing. Hopefully it works in the actual game, but I, I cannot wait to play through this. Um, there is also a firing range where you can try out all the different guns. So you can see what you like. And if you want to spend money on whatever, when you actually see it out in the world, as far as the, uh, the the cargo, there will be now there will now be cargo catapults, which is awesome. You can just shoot your freaking sh- all the way across the map. But I'm like, when it lands, does it get damaged? What if it lands in a freaking river? And then I'm like, well, now it's floating down down. Now I got no, <laughs> well, okay, crap. Um, there are ramps that you can do jumps off with your your trikes and your cars and everything else. There's a buddy bot, Oops. cunning stunts. Don't yeah, be careful. Um, <laughs> there's a buddy bot. So you could do buddy bots in the original game, but I think the way it worked, it's been forever since I played it. Man, I look sweaty. Um, I think the way it worked is you would just go into like your base and you'd be like, hey, here's a side mission. Take this cargo over to Jeff Keeley and I'll put it on this buddy bot and he'll just go. You don't do anything with it. Now the buddy bot can actually be out with you in the world. And if you get tired, you can just jump on him because he's just two legs with like a flat thing. You can be like, man, I don't want, I don't, I don't want to walk no more. Let me jump on my buddy bot. And then the buddy bot goes, brown, 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 brown. And he just takes you over to see Jeff <laughs> Keeley or, you know, the metal gear director. What's his name? Uh, K- Kong Island. What's his name? Um, Jordan, uh, Jordan vote Roberts. Vote Roberts. Yeah. Um, and then there's other transport possibilities. It seems like Kojima is going to be revealing even more up until the launch. Uh, there will be new story missions. So that makes me happy. Um, now, what I don't know, you, you can do PS4 save transfers, but I'm going to do a new, I'll, I'll bring my PS4 save over just so the trophies all pop, but then I'm going to do, I, I want to play it from the beginning, I think. And I don't know if the story missions, I think they said, some, somebody said somewhere that they're going to be like interspersed. It's not just going to be like, Oh, here's a whole new city with stuff. It's just stuff is going to be interwoven. So I, I like that. Um, and there's also a racing mode where you get a hot rod, which is hilarious. Um, so you can do races against fragile and stuff, fragile, whatever name is. Um, and also the previously exclusive PC content, like the cyberpunk stuff and half-life will be in the game. That's cool. I don't care. What do they get? Do I get a crowbar? Like, I don't know what. Um, and you can upgrade to the PS5 director's cut from the PS4 game for $10. If you want to buy the full game, if you don't have it already, it's 50 bucks. I think both those prices are extremely fair. Um, some people are like, oh, it's another game you got to pay to upgrade. I'm like, this isn't just like PS5 mode on death training. This is actually, they actually right. are as much as I love this game and I'll stand for it. They're actually doing a lot. So to say I can just get all this extra stuff and play it on my PS five in 4k 60, whatever, like for 10 bucks. I think that's awesome. Is there any chance in hell you finally say, okay, 
fine. I'm going to play this game. More than you have already. Because you can bring your save over. No? Mm, nothing? Uh, my save. <laughs> well, I mean, you got into chapter I think three. I... I don't even remember. Oh, I remember. It's burned into my brain. You got to <laughs> chapter three, and then you're like, I don't know. If you would have just got to chapter four. I, I'm going to spoil something for you right now. I'll just say it. I've been telling you to get to chapter Go. four all this time. Chapter three takes forever, and I get that. But when you get to chapter four, what happens is that's when you finally get transported to like Mads Mikkelsen's world. Okay. I don't remember what the cutscene is or what happens, but chapter four is you in world war one going through the trenches in a third person shooter that feels like metal gears actually it feels like metal gear solid four, to be honest, the way the shooting mechanics are and stuff. Cause that was as much as I don't love that game, the actual shooting and everything was pretty well done. It just didn't feel like metal gear. That's what this is. And you're going yeah. through the trenches in freaking world war one. And there's, there's a boss fight against Mads and stuff. And that will happen two or three more times. No. Yeah. Two more times after that, I think, but that's and then once you get through that, the chapters go a lot quicker and you get a lot more story as you go. So that's why I was like, please just get through chapter three because once you get to chapter four and you go through that part, you're gonna be like, Oh, I'm actually playing a video game. This is fun. And then the rest of the game really goes from there. So I'll, I'll just say that minor spoiler, the game came out a year and a half ago, but that's why I wanted you to get through chapter three. Yeah. <sighs> I'm gonna play it again. I'm gonna play it again. And I'm gonna stream it, and you're gonna sit there and watch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like. Flip I would your rather eyes open. watch you play this than play it. Yeah, well, it just doesn't seem fun to play. But I would, I would, I would watch you. Maybe not chapter three, but like when you get to chapter four, start streaming it, and I'll or just do a screen share thing. Okay. I'll watch you play it. I'll do but, it. I'll do it because I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna play through okay. it again. I can't wait. So yeah, I'm excited for Death Stranding director's cut. Sean is not. But then again, Sean will probably be excited for Last of Us Part 2 director's cut, and I will not. Maybe. I, I do not give a crap about that game. I need to go back and just do all the cheats to get the platinum and then just tell that game to suck my butt. Okay. <laughs> and then they closed out with Deathloop. Uh, they did about, I think it was about eight or nine minutes of gameplay. So you can use each loop to learn more about the world and your targets. You can save your abilities and weapons between loops with something called Residium. So once you get to a certain level in this game, you can run over to your corpse. You can get all your weapons back. You can get your progress, all that stuff. <laughs> there are multiple ways to get rid of targets. I feel like we've known that the entire time this game has been talked about. Juliana can invade your game as a real player or as an AI if no one is there to control her. Um, for some PVP action. So the hunter, you, becomes the hunted because Juliana's after you as you're after everybody else. And it was revealed that they're exclusive. So this is a console exclusive for one year. So basically, if you're an Xbox fanboy and you want this and you don't have a PC, you can play it September 2022. Sean, I think after how much you have loved Returnal, that this kind of is up your alley. This seems like... First person shooter, no multiplayer, none of that crap that none of us like when it comes to, you know, FPSs. This seems like it would be up your alley. Are you entertaining playing Deathloop? I'm not good enough to play this game, so I'm not, but are you? I would consider it. Yeah. Um, if I don't really, it's the kind of thing that, like, if I'm hard up for something to play when it comes out, maybe I give it a try. I don't know. But I'm not like counting down the days either. But but you weren't uh, for a return a while, so that's true. That is correct. It is correct. I think this is also on sale. It's a it's sixty dollars, but I think it's on sale for like forty five or fifty if you pre order it. Just as an FYI, so you can get it for a discount if you pre order it. But yeah. also the uh, the Sony blog, the the PlayStation blog post um, about the state of play did allude to more events coming in the near future. What did you think overall of the state of play? I thought it was fine. I was glad that they set expectations. Was... Yeah, I mean, it was it was fine. I, I can't say I'm disappointed because it's kind of just more or less what I expected. 
that's fine. Yeah. If they didn't say, hey, no Horizon, no God of War, no PSVR 2, I would have gone in there thinking at least two of those three would be there and that I would have been disappointed. But they set the right expectations, and I appreciate that. I think we're going to get another event about a month or so from now, and that's when we're going to find out if there's any chance of Horizon actually coming out this year. At this point in my head, it's a 2022 game. I I don't see any way that game's coming out this year. I'm starting to feel that way, too. I mean, you can't even pre-order it or anything right now, like on the PlayStation Store. I, I just... And I want it to be right. I don't care. But man, I, I want to play that game so badly this year. But I've got Death Stranding Director's Cut anyway. So, All right, next up, Sean. Remember all those rumors we've been talking about forever on the podcast about that good old, big, beautiful Switch Pro. Do you remember that, Sean? I do remember that. So this week, Nintendo announced a new Switch. Except it was called... Nintendo Switch, parentheses, OLED model, and parentheses. It's out October 8th for three, for tree fitty. Tree fitty. More expensive than the standard Switch. And do you want to know what you get for those $50, Sean? Tell us about it. You get a seven inch OLED screen, which is a whole 0.8 inches bigger than your current screen. Now it is OLED. I'll give them that. But when you're talking about a 720p handheld on a seven inch screen, yeah. You also get a wider kickstand. So it's not just one little dink, it's like a big badunk. To be fair, that's one of those things that like should have been there. Kickstand was terrible. Yeah. How do you screw like. It, literally, it doesn't even hold it up. Like if you put it on a kick scan and you tap the corner, it's falling over. Like how did that make it through any sort of testing? So and I think it's kudos like a, on that, but my yeah. God, it took this long to fix the kick stand. Cause I'm pretty sure it's like that on the switch light too. Right. Uh, Does it even have a kick? Why stand? would it have a kick stand? No, well, because, because you, you can, have to hold, you but can't. you can hook up your pro. You can oh, hook up a controller. Well, that's too. true. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, I guess I don't know if it has a kickstand. It probably does, and it's probably no different since they're making yeah. such a big deal out of this one. It's also got enhanced speakers. Cool. And it's got a wired uh, Ethernet port on the dock, which if you get the dock separately, it will work with your current switch. So for $50, you get a slightly bigger, better screen, a bigger kickstand, and better speakers. So then The Verge reached out to Nintendo and they did confirm to them that, quote, it does not have a new CPU or more RAM from previous Switch models. So Nintendo has confirmed there's nothing better. There's no 4K. There's no better processor. There's no nothing. This really is just an OLED Switch. Now, I don't know who the hell that has a Switch unless your kid has just destroyed it. I, if this was 4K, 4K switch. I think what it comes down to is this is geared exclusively, I have to imagine, to people who pay, play pretty much primarily handheld, yeah. which I've spent maybe 5% of my time on the switch in handheld mode. Same. Like, I get that's a big selling feature of it that you can play it either way. But I hardly ever did this. I just don't. Yeah, it seems I'm sure it's nicer, but look, the thing that's going to sell like hotcakes, you know, it's going to because it's Nintendo. It will be a huge success because Nintendo. But I've got to imagine between trading in a switch, if you bought a switch today, or even if you bought a Switch, when does it come out? October? 8th, yeah. Same day as Metro. If you bought a Switch in September and then tried to trade it in in October, what are you going to get? 50. 150? Maybe 200? Like, I don't know. No way. But you're paying probably, yeah, about $200 extra to upgrade to this. And people will do it. 
I don't really see the point unless you are exclusively playing in handheld mode. So I don't know. I don't, it's not for me. I mean, even if it was a true switch pro, I probably wasn't going to get it. Like I just don't play my switch that often. And the games I want to play on my switch, I don't need a switch pro, even if it did exist. So yeah. I don't know. It, it's funny that some people are like, Oh, you should have never believed the rumors, blah, blah, blah. I was like, well, Bloomberg and other people were really so, running with this stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things where, and I fell for it just like everybody did, but like, why are we still <laughs> believing everything we read on the internet? And yeah, it seemed legit. Like you said, Bloomberg, like it's not just like Joe Schmo. It's not about us. It. <laughs> right. Like, but at the same time, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. But it's also like people are like, yeah, oh. shame on us. I can't hold it against <laughs> Nintendo. Exactly. Do I think this is that big of an upgrade? No. Is it disappointing compared to what we all expected? Yeah, but you can't hold that against Nintendo. They never like they, right. They never gave us any reason to believe that's what we were getting. Never. We all just took it and ran with it and now it's disappointing. So I'm not going to hold that against Nintendo, but I don't know. It seems pretty lackluster to me. And some people are saying like, oh, you should have never expected Nintendo to, to, to do this because all they do is put out like the same thing, but, you know, in a different form factor. And I get it like Game Boy, Game Boy Color. I mean, you could say that was improvement, whatever. But then there wasn't also like there was like the Game Boy Pocket. You had the GBA that went to the GBA clamshell thing that actually had a backlight. I would say that's a big improvement because um, you didn't have to just play it under a lamp. Um the the ds but there other than the last thing i can think of that was not a new system but was an upgrade that actually you know had new technical specs you know like change the game kind of thing probably the game boy color like yeah you had the 3ds and like the 3ds light and the 3ds xl or whatever like ooh, smaller screen bigger screen folds this way doesn't fold folds that way whatever but like this is textbook nintendo what they're doing this is exactly this is what they always do like we haven't gotten anything like the game boy color you could make an argument was kind of like a game boy pro yeah like that was the last time nintendo did anything that could be considered you know an upgrade like a true upgrade to an existing system so yeah this is text <laughs> textbook nintendo <laughs> the only thing i will say though was the so with the 3ds though remember they did the new nintendo 3ds xl and there was something there that was actually better inside that you could only play super nintendo virtual console games on a new nintendo 3ds because of something in, in internal now that was after yeah, it was already true. like on its last legs, but and like Justin Davis was saying on was saying on Game Scoop this week that he actually thinks that Bloomberg's reporting he has no knowledge of this, but his his thinking is that Bloomberg was probably right. But somewhere around the last year or so, going through COVID, they were like, you know what, we've got all these OLED screens, let's just make the same Switch but with a better screen, and then the Switch Pro will actually be the Switch 2 or the Switch U or whatever they end up calling it, like the actual next Switch a year and a half from now or something that'll still be backwards compatible to play all the games, all the carts, all that stuff. That That's kind of what he thinks, and I'm like, that actually makes sense to me. It could be, yeah. So, I don't know. If you want to switch Nintendo Switch parentheses oled model good for you i'm not getting it the, the funny thing Rolls is off this, the tongue. yeah if, if this actually was a switch 4k or a switch pro and there were and then we started finding out up to the lead of breath wild 2 that oh man 30 frames on the old one maybe variable 30 frames but 60 frames locked and 4k on the new i'd be like god dang it nintendo i don't even like breath of the wild and i'm gonna buy the new switch to play breath of the wild 2 in 4k 60 damn it i hate you but they didn't do that luckily yeah. so breath of the wild 2 is gonna be what it is and lastly, here on the news items list, I don't know what that was, what that was just turned out to be out of my <laughs> mouth, but Assassin's Creed Infinity was reported on by Bloomberg and then confirmed by Ubisoft. 
And this comes from The Verge. Ubisoft has officially confirmed the existence of a new Assassin's Creed game codenamed Infinity after a report from Bluebird detailed the new online service-based game. While Ubisoft's announcement doesn't shed much light on what from what form the new game will take, Bloomberg, Bloomberg reports that it will be an evolving online game similar to the likes of Fortnite or GTA Online. Those are two wildly different ends of the spectrum there, just for the record. Infinity marks what is likely to be the biggest change in the franchise's history since its debut in 07. Until now, Ubisoft has tended to release a new standalone Assassin's Creed game once every one or two years, each focused on a single location and time period. But according to Bloomberg, Infinity will feature multiple connected settings that may look and play differently, and this number may expand over time. The new game is apparently years away from release so some other items here um like i said here will be reportedly an evolving platform with multiple different settings the games will be connected but they will look and feel different but we don't even know what this means like i said it's inspired by fortnite and gta online but it's not clear yet if these games will be multiplayer focused or if it will just be kind of like a hub like i don't know uh ubisoft quebec and ubisoft montreal will be working together on this Clint Hawking was revealed to be one of the creative directors. He did Splinter Cell Chaos Theory, Far Cry 2, and the really crappy, in my mind, Watch Dogs Legion. And apparently also it was reported that some developers have left Ubisoft because of Infinity and the direction they're taking with us. I'm like, well, I don't know how this is going to work. But to me, Assassin's Creed doesn't seem like a game that should be going down this route. What do you think? I mean, I see why they're doing it. It's they're hopping on that train. I mean, I get it. But yeah, Assassin's Creed seems like the wrong title to do it with. I don't know. It doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't seem to fit, but nothing grabs me about this. Like, it it could just be now it, it makes sense if you've just got the uh what what the hell is it called the animus is that what it's called the thing that you teleport from the present to the past animus am i saying that right i don't know the thing you plug in the, the matrix you plug into so that makes sense you go to the animus we'll just call it that you go to the animus and then you're like i'm gonna go to Japan. the nemesis yeah the nemesis we're gonna go to nemesis and we're gonna go to <laughs> you know somebody's trying to seize, assassinate Jesus Christ, you know, back in zero. And then we're going to go to 500 and I don't know, I don't know history. We're going to talk to the Romans and then we're going to go to 1790. We're going to go to 1776 and then we're back in Assassin's Creed three. You know, there's, I, I don't know. I, I, I just don't think, and I heard other people talking about like the, the last three Assassin's Creed games. Well, not the last one, because I guess uh, Ragnarok, what the hell was it called? Valhalla wasn't Valhalla. as big, but like Odyssey and Origins were way too big and way too bloated. So now instead of that, you're just going to do one thing that just never ends. I don't know. This one I wish we had. I wish we I mean, had Solar in the chat to talk about Assassin's Creed. But Yeah, it's got potential. I mean, I do think it could be cool. I'm not going to lie. I don't right now. It's, I don't think it's for me, but it could be cool. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see what it ends up. I've literally never played an Assassin's Creed game, which is weird because it seems like something I would like. I've literally never played one. So it's not like, you know, ah, you've lost me with this. Just give me normal Assassin's Creed. I don't care. Like, I don't know. Maybe this will be the one that, gets me to play it who knows but i don't know i mean i played odyssey for 10 15 hours or so but that's when the when i finally got on a ship and i started rowing around and all the icons started popping up and i was like it was like when i tried to play witcher 3 i was like this is too much i'm overwhelmed i just i can't do this thanks bye so yeah now sean's time for the wrap up there's a petition circulating online because we all love freaking petitions online to cancel Kojima's rumored Xbox game, please get a life. Stop. Make petitions for stuff that actually might matter and not trying to cancel a game that has not even been announced or confirmed that a partnership is really actually happening other than report. Stop. What the hell? That's 
stupid. Final Fantasy 16 will not be a Tokyo game show. They said they don't have enough time to get a demo or whatever ready, but uh, it was confirmed that the English voice recording is almost complete. However, the fact that this won't be a TGS, this is November 2022. I don't know why we both predicted it for this year. I think we were just hoping against hope, but it's a it's going to be a holiday 22 game. That is definitely a wish list thing, but holy crap, is next year going to be crazy? If we get Zelda, Horizon, God of War, and Final Fantasy next year, like, are you kidding me? And there's other games, too, that I can't even think of. Hell, Halo Infinite might be next year, too. We don't even know that yet, for sure. And Starfield, yeah. we're not going to play it. But, I mean, yeah, Game of the Year wow. next year is going to be insane. Yeah. We got some more details on Sonic Colors Ultimate HD. And I'm actually kind of thinking I might get this because I played a little bit on the Wii, but this looks so much better. It will run at 4K 60 frames per second with updated visuals. There will be a rival rush mode where you can go against Metal Sonic, customizable controls, a checkpoint system, and remix music. I think it looks cool. This was the only 3D Sonic game I've ever played that I was actually like, this isn't horrible. So this might be one of those things like Christmas, whatever. Like, yeah, let's, let's try Sonic Ultimate, you know? Or yeah. Sonic Colors Ultimate, I should say. Pro Evolution Soccer 2022 is rumored to be going free to play. If that happens, that's going to change the sports landscape, I hope. Because I'm not the first one to say this, but every sports game should just be free to play. And you just download every year if you want to download, you know, updates for what your rosters and stuff, like pay 40 bucks instead of the full 60 or 70, whatever. Here I am. I'm about to pay 70 for Madden 22, but whatever. Uh, Xbox is releasing Space Jam and new legacy controllers. <clears throat> Woohoo. Mortal Kombat 11 will no longer be getting any DLC. Nether Realm has confirmed, and they are moving on to their next project. I My prediction is Injustice 3. Not like that's really out there, but Injustice 3. And then I think when that's done, they'll go, they'll do Mortal Kombat 12 in like five years, is my is my guess. Yeah. The Last of Us season one on HBO will be 10 episodes long. Uh, oh, God. It's going to suck. It's not going to suck. It's going to suck watching it. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they've cast Sarah. I'm like, really? You're going to show that at the beginning. You're going to do that. Really? <sighs> I mean, you kind of have to. No, you don't. It's horrible. I can't. I know. But, I can't take it but when it it's crappy. the mood for the whole ps3 like oh dad and now it's gonna be real people oh my god uh robocop rogue rogue city was announced coming out in 2023 from the developers of terminator resistance uh the developer is Tayon. it's gonna be a first person shooter robocop game shouldn't robocop be either side scrolling or third person don't you want to actually see robocop was the one thing that i thought of with this i was like Cool. Robocop's awesome. It seems but- like it should be third person. Yeah. yeah. Uh, King of Fighters 15. We already know. We already knew that it was delayed to 2022, but now we know King of Fighters 15 will be out in Q1 of 2022. Yes, I'm saying it like that, Sean. Witcher season two is out December 17th on Netflix. Hashtag that's my Superman. Um, Witcher 3 will also they, they did confirm that the next gen or current gen upgrade is still coming this year and there will be free DLC along with that that is inspired by the show this game came out six years ago and it's going to get an update it's just weird to me can I get a next gen update for freaking Metal Gear Solid 5 oh wait no not until Bluepoint does it Dice LA led by Vince Zampella is now called Ripple Effect Studios, which is the dumbest name for a studio I've ever heard in my life. Worse than Blue Box Studios. Yeah, I don't like that. They're helping out in mm-hmm. Battlefield 2042. 2042. <laughs> now you're just forcing it. And PlayStation 2042. Now. PlayStation Now in July is getting Red Dead Redemption 2, Judgment, and Neo 2. Um <laughs> Also, Red Dead Redemption 2, interesting. You cannot stream it. You have to download it. I guess it's just too, like, 
intense for for Sony's crappy PlayStation Now streaming architecture. But uh, so it's on PlayStation yeah. Now in July, but you have to download it. It is supposedly like uh, Push Square was saying, this is the first game that's on PlayStation Now that you can only play if you download. So it's interesting. Yeah. I, I'm I, I think yeah. at one of those. I think I'm going to end up playing that game at some point, not on PlayStation now, but at some point, right. Wario, Wario is going to be like, Ooh, Red Dead Redemption 2 is 10 bucks. I'll be like, yeah, whatever. Like, like Destiny 2 is 10 bucks. I was like, yeah, fine, whatever. I'll buy it. It's 10 bucks. What do I get? If it gets a PS5, I which can't I believe it hasn't. It's yeah. inevitable. Yeah. When it gets a PS5 update, which I mean, it's clearly not happening until after GTA 5. Yeah. I I mean, I don't know. It's something I may just pick up and have no real, like, I definitely would not feel pressured to beat it. Like, I kind of just want to see it. Like, I'm sure it looks beautiful yeah. on PS4. Like, I can only imagine a true PS5 upgrade. Like, I kind of just want to see it. I don't know, experience it, I guess, but... I don't know. I certainly don't see myself playing all the way through it. So I think we'll get a patch for it on PS5 and Xbox Series. And then on PS6 and Xbox Series 2, we'll get the remaster remaster like we're getting for GTA 5 on this gen. And Red Dead Redemption 3 will come out in 17 years. On the PlayStation 7. seven. Yeah. Eight. Or the PlayStation app on your Sony TV. or the, the PlayStation. PlayStation. They they should do it. Whatever. You can keep making fun of me. I don't care. They should do it. Just do it. Bacardi and Cola. Do it. Do it. Do it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for episode 241. Thank you so much for being here. Hopefully the audio quality was good as we record this on Zoom. Speaking of Zoom, we do have one, two, potentially three interviews coming up in the next hopefully month or so. Um, we're going to nail those down. I'm very excited for all three of them. One might be a, uh, a part de a part D of an interview that we did back in March. If you could figure out what that is. Um, but we've got, we've got definitely one. We're trying to knock down the date, knock down, <sighs> locked down the date here in the next week or so. I think the other one, I think it'll be right around the time a certain game comes out that we're both looking forward to and hoping that we get review copies for, which I think we will. Um, but it's going to be a lot of fun. And then another one that I just, now that I don't have the tethers of turd 901 on me, um, I really want to talk to somebody again and really get into it when I don't have to worry about what I'm saying. So speaking of zoom, that's why I just went off on that tangent. So, yeah, but that's it for episode 241. We'll be here for 242 next week, but until that time, Sean, and take us out. Thank you for playing. <laughs>